most people hear that sound and instinctively move away from it. But on this month's episode of Outside Science Inside Parks, we follow a team of NPS biologists in Great Basin National Park who spend a lot of time up close and personal with these cool animals. So we are at a rattlesnake den. We came out looking for snakes. Um, some were out basking kind of in the cracks in the rocks and so they were easy to see um, and easy to catch and others you kind of got to look in the nooks and crannies and see where they are. Um, they'll be regulating their temperature. And I think rattlesnakes play an important role in an ecosystem in that they control rodent populations um, and that can kind of help to curtail disease. Um, mice are vectors for some diseases like hantavirus and we think that rattlesnakes probably have an important role in controlling that not only the rodent populations but also mitigating that disease that can then jump over to humans. For example this site we're at there's probably 75 rattlesnakes that use this and those snakes are each eaten 10 to 20 mice a year and that adds up pretty quick. We'll go out um, usually in the springtime to their den sites because they're kind of contracted and everybody comes back to this one spot um, so they're kind of easier to catch and easier to find. So what I do it's called a capture mark recapture study. Um, you capture an individual and you mark it with um, we use pit tags which are these little glass computer chips similar to what people put in their pets and then when you capture it again you can scan it and you can get that number. We use this to measure the length of these rattlesnakes. They sort of think they're getting away when they go in the tube, so it um, sort of plays on their psychology a little bit. <laughs> now we've got a snake safely restrained and um, scan for that pit tag. And that's his number. A snake this big is almost certainly a male. And um, that's where it was marked last. So this snake has gained two, three rattle segments, it has shed its skin three times since we captured it. And even though you can't tell the age of the rattle by the number of rattles, um, there's still a lot of information in there. So, so when you have a, a rattle string, you have a, basically a history of how that animal has grown over its life. All right. Finish the final product. So he's big, a 400 gram snake is a dominant male out here. But one, one of the more interesting things we found is that over the 18, 19 years of my study, the snakes are coming out on average about a day earlier every year. But over the last 20 years, our snakes are out almost a month earlier than they were out 20 years ago. And that's a huge effect. Ultimately, my goal is to understand how these animal populations interact with humans. So. How can humans and rattlesnakes, a dangerous animal like a rattlesnake, can we coexist? And are there effects on humans? Are there effects on the rattlesnakes? And that's kind of been my privilege to be able to do that kind of work. They're pretty amazing, huh? So join us next month for another episode of Outside Science Inside Pox.